thanks for coming back to the channel and welcome to another video. This time a little bit different to start off with, we're going to go through some of the preparation that I do for my PwC before I go fishing. Uh, then we're going to go out for the full day of fishing and then return back and I'll show you how I actually clean up the uh, equipment uh, before I start it again. Stand by, hope you enjoy the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some fuel in. The uh, trip that I've got coming up is not a big one, so it's not as big as my normal weekend trip. So I normally would fill up my main tank and my reserve tank. I have a second 27 litre tank. On, it sits on top of the standard tank on my FXHO. But uh, this particular trip, I'm just thinking I probably won't need the full second, second, second tank because I haven't got as much mileage to cover. So um, I might just fill up the bottom one and put about 10 litres in the top and uh, that'll give me plenty. I think the 10 litres is pretty much a safeguard just to make sure that if uh, we do end up pushing pretty wide, I don't um, have this need to uh, come back too early. All right, let's fill her up. If anybody's got an FXHO, they'll, they'll know how slow it is actually to fill up the tank at the Bowsers because they do spit back a lot of fuel and um, you've got to fill them up very slowly. So doing it this way, um, it's a lot easier for me to tell you the truth. I'll fill up these tanks nice and quick at the Bowser storeroom um, beside the ski for when I'm going out next and then I'll put them in the night before. One of the things you should do is try to work out how much fuel your ski uses per, per kilometre or per mile. And then if you're doing a trip to a, a location that you haven't been before, you can use an application like um, Navionics, um, Active Captain on Garmin, and there's of course others for the other, the other brands. Um, use the application to work out what is the distance that you're, you're traveling and then you can know roughly how much fuel you're gonna need. Uh, the other thing about the FXHO has a pretty average fuel gauge, just not very accurate. And the alarm for low fuel goes off at various, various levels. Sometimes it's uh, at half tank, it will go off. Sometimes at uh, you know, 10, 15 litres where it's supposed to go off. So best gauge is actually the fuel consumption on the ski. So you actually set your uh, amount of fuel used, you reset it before each trip, and then you can actually see how much fuel you're using during the day and keep an eye on it. So that's the outlet to my uh, second tank, which um, you see there's the standard standard tank's uh, entry point and here is the auxiliary tank, it's just above it. So now I'm just topping up the uh, auxiliary, I'm going to put about 10 litres in this top one. So I'll have a total of uh, 80 litres roughly and that will give me quite a distance to travel somewhere around 100 and 60 kilometers of cruising um, and you know if you're going fast or whatever that varies quite a bit because you can burn between 15 liters an hour to 25 liters an hour you know depending on the speed you're going and it's not a big difference in speed probably 20 k's an hour uh, and you're getting a you know a 20 30 percent more fuel burn remember to put your caps back on one thing you'll notice with the FX2, and probably, probably uh, I've, I've heard it from the fish pros as well, is that you'll, when your tanks are quite full, you always try to leave a little bit of an air gap at the top of them. And when they are full, you do get a bit of a petrol vapor smell sometimes. So uh, it's pretty normal on my FX. Originally, I was very concerned about it, but um, you know, I've had about 600 hours on the motor now, so, and literally, 60, 70 trips, um, and I haven't had any dramas, touch wood. Next, I'll probably fill up some of the equipment that I put in my ski now. I'm always carrying an anchor. I have a tow rope. If I break down or need to tow somebody else, I've got a tow rope. Uh, I put that in my front hatch because I'm not going to access it very much. Uh, and I also will put something, you know, anything that's not going to be really used throughout the day, but I need to carry it. Of course, I've got a, a fire extinguisher in the front hatch as well. Hopefully, I'll never have to use that. So, tow rope, I also have a drogue chute, um, so sometimes drogue chute I'll use for drifting, it's rare I actually use it recently. Uh, it's easy to put in though, it's a small little bag and it's another safety aspect, so if you ever do break down a long way out at sea, it's a bit choppy and you need to wait for rescue, drogue chute off the front of the ski, keep your pointed into the swell, it'll keep the seasickness down and it'll be a bit more comfortable than rocking and rolling. And of course, a trusty old anchor. Um, I did do a video on this anchor 
uh, some time back. I'll put a link in the description above here if you want to see it, how I use, use the anchor on the ski. But generally, that's, again, a safety thing. I rarely use this. Uh, most of the time I'm fishing in too deep a water to really use an anchor, so I don't bother. But I do, I do keep it because uh, I have used it uh, once when I did run out of fuel accidentally. It was my only ever breakdown, I guess. And um, I needed it to secure myself until I got the local volunteer marine rescue to take me back. The other things I generally put in my front hatch is my lunch. I have a little lunch pail, which I put a freezer ba a box in there and a couple of drinks. I normally make some sandwiches the night before. You do get hungry, you know, you're getting up very early and you're out in the water for quite a while. So a bit of food, a bit of drink, keeps you going, keeps the stamina going. I'll put that in the front and <coughs> It is quite a distance to reach over for the handlebars on an FXHO, but it's not impossible. You can still lean over and you know, get in there. Um, so what I do with a lunch pail, this is it here. Just a simple little mini esky or cooler. And it'll go in there like that. And what I do is leave the strap up here, just sort of over the top of the, the lip there, so that when I need to access it in the water, I just lean over, grab the strap and pull it out. Nice and simple. The other thing that I put in here, and I carry my drone. Um, it's rare I can actually fly the drone off the ski because it's generally there's a lot of swell. Um, any sort of wind, it makes it really hard to land. It's actually easy to fly the drone in, you know, pretty pretty challenging conditions. Taking off and you know flying it, it's not a problem. But it's actually landing in swell and wind because you've got the problem of. Uh, you're moving constantly on the ski. You're also going up and down with swell. So you actually could be raising one to two meters in the air, depending on the size of the swell. So when you're gonna land that thing, it's coming in, it's stable and you're going up and down. So I generally will only fly the drone when it's fairly flat. And um, uh, you'll see that, you know, in the last couple of trips, I haven't been able to do that. Catch bag. So I have a catch bag. I always carry a catch bag and the catch bag, um, is 1.5 meters long. So the reason I have such a big catch bag is A, I can carry it in my tubbies. The tubbies actually have an interior dimension of about 1.5 meters. So I get a big fish, I can carry it inside the tubby. Uh, secondly, these bags are tough. They're actually very strong plastic. Uh, they've only got a, a fairly thin liner. There's about a five mil um, foam liner, I believe, inside these. The good thing with the tubby side of it is that they're fiberglass. If you put freezer blocks or ice inside this bag, inside that fiberglass tubby, it, they do last all day quite well. So you can keep fish, you know, chilled quite easily with a good bag and with the tubbies. If you haven't got it, the tubbies, of course, you'll be putting it in the footwell. Um, most likely, maybe across the back of the ski if it's a, a shorter bag than this one. Maybe a one meter, one, 1200 bag would fit across the back of a Fish Pro. Uh, the problem is they will get wet, so you, you're going to find that your fish aren't going to keep all day. Water does get in through zips or, or leaks in through the seams, and uh, it will make that ice melt quicker. So, yeah, the point is um, I take a 1.5 metre bag, um, and I have had several fish that are over the 1,200 millimetre, and I have had a 1.57, which didn't even fit in this bag. So it, its tail was hanging out the end and it actually came out of the back of the tubby. I had to sort of have some of the, the tail sticking out of the tubby. So what I do is normally make sure the zip's up and then jam it in, zip up. And it fits in there like that. So I can put my ice, ice bricks inside there and uh, fair bit of space for everything else. Okay, the other things I do in this particular pot I carry is my nav light. I have a uh, Railblazer nav light. And actually what I do most times is just check that the battery's okay. So on, the, on it's got a little button here. Just make sure the, uh, they're shining brightly. The Railblazer has three settings, which are bright, uh, medium, and a flashing setting. To make sure it's turned off before you stow it. In it goes, in the tubby. I also carry a gaff. I have my beautiful stainless gaff made by Rustler with the diamond um, and a cutting point. Quite a nice gaff. And it's got a nice reach on this one, but you know, generally if, you're, if you haven't got tubbies, you probably want to carry a shorter gaff. Uh, we have a 700 mil on, our, on the Jetcast website actually, if you're looking for it. 
and down we go. Um, that one goes in as well. Plenty of room in the tubbies for my gaff. And the last thing I carry in my tubby on this side is I have a little bait net. So my bait net is, is perfect. On the rear of my jet ski is a live bait tank. And this actually has quite a, a large capacity. I think it's about 20 litres. So there's quite a bit of fish you can put in there if it's full up. You'll notice that it's got holes on the back. The holes on the back uh, allow water to overflow and it gets its water from this feeder. And this feeder actually comes from the visibility spout on the back of the Yamaha and it has a pickup. The visibility spout actually has like a little scoop which scoops water out of the jet and that gives it that uh, Yamaha visibility sort of spout. We disconnect that. There's a hose that comes up from the bottom and that feeds into the tank. And it's quite a bit of pressure comes in through this when you're under speed. So you can vary it with a valve here. So when it's full on, perfect if you're in idle, you get a, a nice constant trickle of water. As long as you're moving, there's a bit of water going in there. But when you're traveling, there's actually such a force coming through this that I actually have to turn it down or else it actually blows the top off the, <laughs> off the uh, bait tank. So just, just a point there, there's so much water pressure from that scoop, uh, it will refill this thing in no time. Gloves, I always gl wear gloves obvious, for obvious reasons when I'm, uh, when I'm fishing and also when you're riding, you know, just to try to minimize uh, blisters on these soft office hands. The hands can be a touch uh, delicate, I guess, in, especially if you've been in the water all day. So I wear gloves. I use the short finger ones so they still have a tactile feel for uh, doing things. And especially if I'm uh, trying to thread a fishing line through a hook when I'm making rigs or if I'm trying to use my phone at sea. So uh, fingers, good. So on the tubbies here, I've got a little glove box and the little glove box carries a few things. I put uh, fishing line as in leader material in there. But I also, on this side, I put my gloves in there for when I'm traveling. So I always know where they are. When I get to the ramp, I can just pull the gloves out. Okay. I don't normally wear goggles out in the water. I wear sunglasses. So uh, in the mornings, if it's really cold, I've got a pair of clear uh, protective glasses which actually keep the eyes you know warm keeps the the cold wind off it so they're good for splashes of course but um, my sunglasses are the main eye protection when I'm on the water and a tip for all you out there get some Rain-X rain or equivalent brands put them on your sunglasses or protective glasses um, use them on your GoPro lenses of course and it keeps the water from pooling on your glasses and what happens is the water will still hit your glasses but wind will blow those water droplets off, so it'll keep it nice and clear for you. Next thing would be, I always check my sounder. Sounder's a Garmin 95 UHD. It's a nine inch diagonal screen. It's a touch screen as well. This is a Rustler cover, mandatory if you're a jet ski fisher to cover up your sounder. Uh, they won't last real long, um, unfortunately, if they get salt water on them and the Garmin's and a few other brands which have removable head units. So for security, you can take the head unit off the cradle. The problem is the multi-pin connectors do leave the ability for salt water to penetrate. So the covers stop that completely. I've had this sounder for about two years on the ski, countless bar crossings and rough weathers, and it's holding up beautifully. So I just checked that it's firm. I checked the thumb wheels are still secure and haven't vibrated loose. And then I, what I'd normally do uh, between trips is sort of let it go nice and floppy so it dries, and then I tighten up the Velcro again uh, before I travel just to make sure that it's fairly neat. Yeah, one of the things you should never forget is to put your bungs back in. So I try to remember to do that pretty much the day before I go out so I don't have any sort of uh, worry about them not being done. So put the bung in on both sides. Okay, well, I'm down here. I'd also check my straps are tight because I'm going to be towing, I'm going to be taking this ski some distance tomorrow and the last thing I need is the ski to come off the trailer on the way to the ramp. Heavy suckers. Make sure they're firmly on and of course the rear seat as well. Make sure they're firmly on. But one thing to be very careful about is tire pressure on your trailers. Um, if you neglect that, you can have a blowout and that's gonna ruin your morning on your way to the ramp. I have had a, had a blowout once and I, I learned the lesson about uh, tire pressure. So I'm gonna just check the tires.
I might just check the front here, just making sure that this is tight. This is definitely in and my safety chain is connected. So one of the great things about a ski with tubbies is the amount of gear you can carry and you know, there'll be purists out there say, oh, why do you want a soft bait earner? Why do you carry so much gear? If you look at the videos, the past three, three years, I think we've been fishing on the offshore, we go to various places and the various depths and we target different types of fish. We're not always targeting snapper or we're not always targeting XYZ fish. Where we go, there's a variety of fish and on the day, you know, we want to make well, take advantage. We want to take advantage of the conditions on the day. And that might mean casting lures at bust ups in the morning. It could be getting live bait for bottom fishing later on. It could be dropping pilchers for, you know, floating pilchers for snapper, for instance. So there's a variety of things. So what's worse is getting out there and not having the gear to suit the conditions. So uh, if we were just chasing one type of fish, you know, and that's all we had in our local waters, fair enough. But we've got, we're very lucky. We're in a bit of a hot spot where we have combination of cold water and trop, I guess tropical or subtropical species. And um, therefore, any one day, I want to make the most of it. I'm driving three hours total tomorrow. There's shallow reefs, there's deep reefs. There could be um, reef type fish. There could be deep water uh, fish. There could be fish in the water column. So, you know, there could be, as I said, snapper. We could be chasing mulloway, which is the jewfish. Uh, we could be seeing amberjacks in the midwater as well. So combination could be soft plastics. It could be bait. It could be live bait. It might be trolling lures. It might be casting lures. I don't always take everything, but uh, the, you know, the great thing is, is I can, and I don't really have a problem with storage on this ski. So I'm going to load her up and you'll see what I mean. So this one is a combination of soft baits and some lures. Um, this one is some hooks, uh, assist hooks and a couple of jigs that I might have out that I'm going to use. I'm using Sistema uh, sealed plastic boxes. They're quite tough and they're sealed. They'll keep the water out pretty well. Uh, and as I said, in a variety of things that I can carry, I will uh, uh, put them in these boxes. They stack pretty well inside the tubbies. Got a new little one which I've got some nice jigs in. Gonna be jigging, so definitely gonna carry some jigs. I've also got some Kabura lures from Globite. Um, a nice little box they came in. I take some sinkers, both Lumo, uh, some heavy heavy uh, sinkers if I'm gonna be fishing deep or in a reef. I need to get it down. Um, I've got some. We're sort of at getting close to that threshold where. Uh, the this, this summer species may come through. It's a little bit early, but um, I, I have some pre-rigged uh, rigs here, including a wire, a wire rig for a mackerel, just in case we start getting snipped off when there's a bit of mackerel action, because they're, they're generally around. Sometimes they're just a little bit more dose, a little bit more dormant, um, deeper, and, and you know, you get a snip off and you wonder what the hell happened. So I do take some wire, just one wire rig along with me, and in summer I might carry more. And then also trolling lures. So uh, the uh, trolling lures for both deep water and shallow water. Some of these have been successful on tuna. They've been successful on mackerel. So I can carry those because I've got the room. Okay, um, sunscreen, mandatory for me, especially. Um, I'll put a, a hat. I've got a wide brim hat for later on in the day, which I'll stow in the tubbies. And that's pretty much it. Um, that, that one is pretty much loaded. I'll clean this up in a second, but, uh, uh, and stack it a little bit better than I've got here. The other thing I take in my tubby is a uh, sabiki rod so that I can catch live bait. And I have a fold up style one, which the line actually goes down a tube. And that means I can stow it in my tubby and not foul it on, the hooks on anything. It's great. So that one fits also beautifully down inside my tubby here. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to take most of my gear out. I'm just checking that when I did the braid to leader that I've got these things okay because the last thing you want is to hook onto a trophy fish and lose it by not failure. So I'm just looking at this one here. Sometimes when I redo them on the water they're, they're not as good as the ones I do on land. But um, what I'm going to do 
as I said, is just check check my gear, uh, make sure that the braid to leader knots are still good. If they're looking a little bit worn or a bit dodgy, I'll, I will replace them. I'll actually retie them. I know I've got to try, I've got to redo one here because I can see it that it's actually looking a bit dodgy. I'm going to retie this one and then I'll cover up my, uh, my reels, put the reel covers on them, stow them. Generally, I'll put them in the car when I'm traveling. I, I sometimes will leave them on the, in the rod holders. Uh, you've got to be really careful with some of the rods. They stick up a bit and you hit a low, a low um, branch in a suburban neighborhood and you could, uh, that could be the end of your rod. So uh, I generally carry them in the back of my, uh, I've got a, a station wagon a car, so I normally keep them inside when I'm traveling. And also, you know, security. I, I, I normally have the car packed the night before, so um, it's best to have them inside the car, not outside with somebody might, uh, you know, come along and think they want those. We're doing a little bit of live baiting tomorrow. We're looking at uh, potentially a spot where we catch some mulloway. I haven't been up there for quite a while. There's a bit of reports of some mulloway hanging around. So, um, so this is my Stella 14,000 and it's on a, a Shimano Blue Water Spin. Uh, this is a seven foot six rod. So I use this for many things. It's been used for casting at larger pelagics, um, for trolling for Spanish mackerel and live baiting for Spanish mackerel, of course and also for bottom dropping live bait. So I wouldn't use this normally for spinning with, you know, for snapper and things, but um, if I'm looking for a larger fish like a mulloway, and that's what we're targeting tomorrow, I'd use this one. And the reason is it's very strong. Um, I've got 60 pound braid on it, so I'm not gonna break that in a hurry. Uh, and I can, you know, obviously rig it a little bit heavier uh, for the deeper water. And, you know, one minute you're catching a smaller snapper, next minute you're, you might hook onto a, quite a large mulloway or a, or a uh, long-tailed tuna. So that's, that's the Stella 14,000. Um, heavy, it's quite a heavy all-round rod, so I don't use this all the time. But um, I've had this for quite a while. I've had it when, since I've started jet ski fishing. And um, it's been a, been a winner. I've caught so many large fish on this. It's not funny. I, you know, to be ashamed, this, this rod's probably seen better days. The butt's completely uh, needs replacing. Um, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a fond rod. Uh, I've, I've had it for so long, I don't, really don't want to get rid of it yet. So as you all know, uh, reels get a caning when they're out jet ski fishing. So, of course, I cover my reels. And by covering them, I have a very long time between servicing. This particular rig here, it's probably due for service, but it's been two years and it doesn't sound crunchy or anything still. So um, you, others can go and buy the, um, you know, better seal reels. That's fine. The, the, the things like the uh, new IPX8 slammers um, or their better reels are a, a good option. But even those can um, exhibit a little bit of uh, crunchiness in the bail arm bearing. So Best thing is to cover them anyway. Um, they're still going to get wet. Your reels will still get wet when you're trolling or when you're fishing out in the water from splash. It's the the, uh, the movement at speed on a ski with the water hitting it is what penetrates and damages your reels and your reel parts. So by covering them, you're going to extend the time between services. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Um, rods in, PFD, Wetsuit, if you're wearing a wetsuit, pack that, have it ready to go. Most of the time I get to the ramp, it's very, very dark. And um, so I have everything sort of laid out, ready to go. So I can put the rods on and grab my uh, wetsuit, put my clothes on, PFD, etc., uh, and then go straight to the water. The other thing to remember is you're gonna be backing the ski into the water. So you're gonna be a little bit wet. You're gonna have at least wet legs, maybe up to your knees or deeper. So take a couple of towels. I put a few towels in the back. One of them I grab for the front of the car so that when I put the ski in the water, when I walk up to take the car to the car park with the trailer, I can have my feet on a towel to keep them dry so I don't have salt water in, you know, sitting in the car all day. Um, yeah, well, that's about it. Uh, this is part one. Um, the next part I'm gonna go to the day out in the water, use all the gear that I've packed and um, hopefully I'll catch some fish. Otherwise, it's gonna be a very short part two and it might even be Called part three uh, when I get back after the day out in the water where I'm going to show you in part three uh, how I clean the ski and how I clean up my gear in preparation for the next time. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope it was informative. 
Any comments you have, put them down below. Uh, if you're new to the channel and like what you see, please hit that like button. Hit the like button anyway. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.